Um, anytime I'm invited to have opportunity to speak to young brothers in prison, it gives me great pleasure because I was once sitting exactly where you are right now. But I wanted to come here today to tell you guys that the journey and life for you begin the day that you came in these prison walls. You might can't see it, but it begins the day that you came in these prison walls. You know, coming to prison, to me, was almost like being born again. You can take what you learn here and make a better life for yourself. That journey began when you came to prison. Like I said, you might not see it now, but it is. Growing up the way I grew up, and I, and, I, and I grew up rough. I mean, I, I can sit here and tell you about growing up the way I grew up, and I can say the majority of y'all, the majority of y'all couldn't match the things that I went through growing up as a child. Because I've been through every single thing that you can go through growing up as a child. You know, my only brother, Lost him at the age of nine. Father left. But what I come here today to tell you guys is that in spite of all that, in spite of all that, God is still on the throne, regardless. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Do you guys still believe in God? Do you still believe in the Holy Ghost? Well, come on and praise the Lord with me, because he has truly blessed me. And that you have kept me, and I thank God for this unchanging hand. Thank you. Thank you, God. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you have a certain responsibility to, to give back to the community to help someone else along, whether it's, whether it's through money or whether it's through your time and talent. Um, anybody that know me knows that I've been through a lot in my life. Um, I grew up single parent. My only brother tragically killed in a drug accident when I was nine years old. Um, introduced to the drug trade by my mother's dead boyfriend at the age of 14. Homeless, living in the streets, on drugs. I mean, I can sit here and tell you a story that will blow your mind. But through it all, God was there. And you guys have an opportunity to make a better life for yourself right now. If you just make that choice, that conscious decision in your mind to say, this is it. This year we're looking to raise $20,000 for this program that is doing great things in the city of Trenton teaching our kids entrepreneurship skills, and I can only imagine where my life would be when I was going to school if a program like this existed when I was going to school.
also like to thank my wife of 25 years, the mother of my daughter and my son, the grandmother of my grandchildren. I mean, 34 years me and my wife been together, and she has been with me through all that, and I thank God for her. Just wave your hand, man. I came home from 1993 from prison, dead broke. You crippled from the door. When you come home from jail, you got the weight of the world on your shoulder. I know, because I've already been there. About getting our African-American male, especially African-American male kids, to really understand that being smart, right. talking smart, like you got some right. sense, and education is cool, because so many of our kids don't think that it is. No. Psalms 27.1 says, the Lord is my life and my strength, so whom shall I fear? I should never be afraid, and I wasn't afraid. That some of the things that I've been through now since 1993, you have not been through. And that's one thing of starting a business, starting something from scratch. Learning how to take nothing and make it into something. Listen, Orioles, we, we, we need your support at the MOB program. Um, these kids, yes, they need the family support, but they need a whole community support. Three days, you know, and I got the bad news three days before Christmas. You know, that was my Christmas present, that I was diagnosed with cancer, and that my cancer was 60%. My prostate was 60% cancer, and that I had to have surgery within the 90 days. And of course, I stressed that 90 days all the way out. But um, I thank God because, you know, I went and seen a doctor a couple of weeks ago, and he told me all the stuff that I would be going through, and, you know, and I, I've had none of those symptoms. I feel absolutely great. And I thank God for it. You know, I own two companies. One company is a construction company that does a little over a million dollars a year. The other one is a real estate development company that has close to three million dollars in assets that does about, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. But what I'm telling you, and I'm not saying that to brag or boast, but I'm saying this to tell you that I started that from nothing. I started that out of prison. Three years out of prison. Got a job, learned that trade real good, became foreman. Once I became foreman, started looking at that owner saying, Man, you running this company, you do the same thing you do. Why I'm working for you. And that's the way you gotta look at it. You gotta look at other folks and say, what's the difference between me and you? The fastest growing prison population out there right now is women. Yeah. So yeah. the women, the young ladies that, that we see out there every day, with the foul mouth and the foul clothes, you know what I mean? Those young ladies are heading to some of the same place some of our young males are heading to. So we have to um, head that off too, actually, next week. Yes, I remember 
last time I was locked up. I spent 365 days in that said Galway. 23 hour lockup. That means you don't leave that cell for 23 hours. But I had a good conversation with the law for those 365 days. I remember, I remember reading the Bible from cover to cover. I remember praying in the morning and getting on my knees. I remember sitting on the side of the bed, just looking out the window and, and thanking him just to be alive and have him give me another chance. And so, you know, even now, you know, every morning I get up on my knees, but, you know, God has my hand and I really believe that. And I left a job making $35 an hour. $35 an hour to start my own business. That was a leap of faith. Something told me deep down inside that I could do it. And I believe that. And I need for you guys to believe that no matter what, in spite of, you guys can make it, man. You guys can make it. I am living testimony that you can make it. Because I've been there and I've done that and I know what it's about. You I've been in business for almost almost going on 12 years and you know I've always learned that you can't operate by yourself sometimes it takes a team to make a business successful one thing I've always learned about business and I'm gonna share a little bit of this with y'all is that you always want to be around and, and network with people you know that are in doing the same thing that you're doing and because they always say my, my dad always told me that you know iron sharpens iron so you always want to be around people that's a little bit sharper than you too. So. You ever see me running and nobody's chasing me? If you ever see me, I mean, you know that I have a conversation with him on a daily basis. It's not just when I get up and get on my knees. I talk to him every single day and every single minute and every single hour. We are in constant contact with each other. And I thank God for him and I thank you. Leaving the prison in Yardville, Cassie Trace, you coming back. And he was right. He was right because I did come back. You know, but I try to fool him and tell him that, nah, I'm not coming back. He said, y'all, nah, you coming back. Because he watched me the whole time I was in prison, my first bid in 1980. He watched me. He said, Trace, you have done nothing since the whole time you've been here. You play spades, which you were good at, a locker full of cigarettes, and everything else. And you did good at that, and you did good at running the prison, and you get, did good at just doing your time. But I ended up not learning a thing when I was there. Not learning a thing until my second bid. And, and second what we're finding out is that, you know, the state is spending $36,000 per year to house an inmate in jail. And, and you can cut that cost in half and even cut it again and send a person to either a vocational school or either the college spending that type of money. Reentry is going to be a big thing. Reentry affects not only the individual that's coming home, but we have to start looking at the babies. Two-parent households. If the father or the mother is incarcerated or is coming home from being incarcerated, is not able to find a job, nobody wants to give them that opportunity because of their record. It is a vicious cycle that reflects and it affects our children who are growing up without that parent, without that breadwinner in the house because that person can't find a job. Because what we, it's costing us as taxpayers a ton of money each year to keep an inmate incarcerated, especially a nonviolent inmate. And we need to find ways that we can not only cut that cost of spending a half a billion dollars a year in the prison system in the state of New Jersey, and also to reintegrate our folks back into society where that they can either be educated, trained, or find employment. My second bid, I did every program that's available. Every drug program, every training course, everything that the prison system had to offer me my second time around, I took advantage of. And that's what you guys gotta do. You gotta take advantage of everything that the prison system throws at you, everything that the prison system has to offer you to better yourself. You gotta take advantage of that. I wouldn't be able to do anything that I've been able to do without the strength that I that I get from, from my religion. And one of the things that I always tell people all the time is that when my kids are growing up, I got two grown kids now. I got a, a son and a daughter that both of them are, are not even teenagers, they're grown kids. And through a better part of their lives, I was not there. I was in and out of prison. 
So coming back to be able to establish a good relationship with your kids, to, to in, encourage them not to do some of the things that you did. And one thing I always tell people all the time, I look back on my life, Sean. I wouldn't take not one thing back because what my past has done for me has made me the person that I am today. When I first came home in 93, I had to look for a job, but I tell people all the time that sometimes you have to take the lowest paying job there is to start, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay there. The name of the game is that you get that job, and while you work in that job, you look for something better. Among them, Tracy Syfax, a property developer who knows only too well how the local economy has taken a hammering. Well, I would describe the housing market right now in the United States as very weak. Um, houses that are on the market are not selling. Um, he says there's so much uncertainty about jobs, so little confidence, that there's only one conclusion, whatever the president says. In your view, the U.S. is in recession right now. No, I think I think it is. I believe right now all the signs are there that we're actually in a recession right now. I think you hear a lot of spin coming out of Washington saying that we're on the verge or we're getting close to it, but I think we are. But I'm a humble person, and, and I know where my blessings come from. So, therefore, when people say those things about you, when people talk about you, when people do things behind your back because they know where you've been, you just smile and just keep right on moving because I know what God has for me is for me. And I'm gonna continue this struggle. Life's a struggle. Every day you get up in the morning, it's a struggle. Whether you're working or you're not working, it is still a struggle. So realizing that, you know, sometimes your blessings come from your struggles. I realize that. Even now in business now, you know what I mean? These are some hard times we're living in. For anybody that's in business, for anybody that's working, you, 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 you read about the people from the city of Trenton that's being laid off, these are hard times that we live in. It. But you have to stay fast, you have to, to, to stay well grounded, and you have to believe that things are going to get better. And I, that's I, those Come on, those are absurd. <laughs> Look, I love all of y'all. You had to get something out the air and grab it and put something on yourself. Thank you, God bless you all. I love y'all. Thank you.